Hi there. I've had an interesting morning. I've come to this pasture. I haven't been here in a while. Very exciting. You may remember from a previous video, I said, oh look, I can hear curlews. Well, they're nesting. They're nesting over there and I've just seen the nest. Um, I was given the, the coordinates and I've just gone and had a quick look, or rather I went a lot earlier, just so I knew where it was, just so I could be acquainted with where it was, so I can stay well away from it. And we, you, we may hear them again with any luck. I can't see them, but can you hear them? I took some advice of someone who left a comment in this channel saying you should dig up all the aluminium and, and, and wing pulls and stuff because you never know. So I spent the morning, I have never dug so many modern coinage and so many wing pulls in my life. I haven't dug one decent thing. I, I'm never going to say I'm right all the time because I'm not. But I am right on this field of what to ignore. And I've wasted so much time digging what I knew were ring pulls and modern coinage. It's been a bit infuriating. The thing is that I might miss out on the odd good thing. I really do. I, I might well do, but I'm prepared to take that chance. I do not want to spend three hours digging ring pulls. I just don't want to do that. It's dri driven me slightly mad. So anyhow, just cut the story short, rant over. I've gone and had a sit down and I've come back with a different mindset of not to drink it, not to dig anything shallow. Because as a general rule, if it's deep, it's got a chance of being good. Um, and the ring pulls and stuff aren't deep. There might be the odd thing on the surface which I've missed, but big deal, big whoopee do. I'm only going for deep targets. I've dug two since I've come back out. One is a tiny dagger shape. Not the, not the most fascinating thing in the world, but my God, it beats a ring pull and a, and a, and a 20 pence piece. And then my second target. <sighs> Gosh, sorry to go on. I've, I'm at the end of my tether slightly on, on that. Anyhow, and my second target is a little Roman coin. Hooray! Absolutely brilliant. There's an outside chance this could be a denarius. Actually, now, I, now I'm rubbing it. Um, it's quite thick and it's very dark. No, um, almost certainly bronze, but you never know. Yeah, I think that might be silver. <laughs> ah! My God, that would be absolutely, that would make my day after the morning I've had. It's left me no time to do, to do proper stuff. It's left me an hour and a half now to, to, to dig what I really want to dig. Um, but at least it's shown me, it's made a point that once I've got everything else out of this field, then I can go on to ring pulls and pound coins just in case one of them might be something good. But anyhow, well, I think that's early, I think that's an early silver. And I'm absolutely cock a hoop if it is. We, we can use it on my electrolysis video. Hi there, welcome to headquarters. I was right. It is silver, even though it's not in the best condition. It's been quite clipped and there's not an awful lot to go on. But you can clearly see a young man's bust on one side and it's of Geta, who was full emperor alongside his brother Caracalla for a matter of months after the death of his father Septimus Severus in 211 AD. His idea was that his sons would co-rule, but that was never going to happen. Um, I think it was Caracalla, the more fearsome of the two, did not like th the idea at all. Apparently, um, even after the, immediately even after the death of their father, on their way back to Italy, because I think they were all in York at the time. I know Septimus Severus died in York, but there was animosity right from the beginning, and it looked early signs could tell that it was never going to work. They walked around with bodyguards all day long. Uh, and one couldn't really get to the other. They, they, they didn't see or speak to each other unless, unless in the presence of their mother. I think um, several attempts on Geta's life <laughs> have been orchestrated unsuccessfully by Caracalla. Um, and then eventually, in late 211, I think peace talks were organised with their mother, Julia Domna, um, and therefore no bodyguards present, at which point uh, centurions rushed in and killed Geta, who died in his mother's arms, from all accounts. So not a particularly happy end for old Geta, who died, I think he was 20, 21 years old, very, very young. Caracalla then swiftly executed uh, Damnatio Memoriae, which is basically um, erasing Getter's memory from, the ex from, from history completely, destroying all records, all writings, sculpture, pictures, um, 
everything that was associated with getting completely eradicated. But we are left with coins. And as I said, it's a young bust. It's a young emperor. It's a young getter. Now, until the death of their father in 211, as I said, the, 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 the busts are very similar. They're sort of very young looking um, men. And, and this one is getter. I wasn't sure. I thought it might be Caracalla. I put it on the detectinghub.co.uk and the mighty warlocks there ag agreed that it, w that it was getter. And so there you are, a lovely little early third century denarius. Now, as I said in the field, this is perfect. Even though it's the only getter I've got, I'm willing to risk electrocution on this one to see um, if we can get some of the, 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 the black crusting um, off it. If the worst comes to the worst, like in all cases of electrolysis or coin cleaning or artifact cleaning, don't do it on anything that you value. Uh, I mean, this is, I do value this, but I'm also willing to risk it because I think it's going to work. And I've got a couple of other things, including a hammered coin um, and a very, and that knackered old George III shilling or whatever it is, half crown. I think that's been in f a fire because I've tried to clean a bit of it already. And, and I can see where there are knobbly bits and on, on, on the surface which aren't part of the uh, of the original engraving. So there's three things we might have a quick go at. So please join me in the electrocution room. Hi there and welcome to the electrocution room. Right, here we go. There's lots of things on YouTube already of how to actually make your electrolysis kit. It's fairly simple so I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of that um, here. If you want me to do an entire video on it I will but suffice to say I've got an old phone charger um, which I've split into two. One's got the negative end on it, one's got the positive end, one's a cathode, one's an anode, don't ask me which. I think I'm right in saying that you need to put your thing you want to clean on the negative and have your what they call a sacrificial metal, in this case it's stainless steel um, spoon, on the other one. Don't let the two touch each other. Here we have the electrolyte, which is just um, warm water with... Now, with I've got bicarbonate of soda in it. I think you can use salt, you can use um, lemon. Um, there's all sorts of reasons for not using one and using the other. I'm not going to go into all that now. I'm using bicarbonate of soda. This helps with the whole um, electrolysis working on the, the, um, or the current going in between the two. As you can tell, I'm not particularly technical about all this sort of stuff. And, and you may not know which is the positive and negative. It's a very easy way to find out. Um, the, the side which is doing the more bubbling tends to be the <laughs> tends to be the one that you want to be putting what you want to clean on. So I'm sorry not to get more technical. If you want me to get technical and, and do a proper video on it, then th th then let me know. Anyhow, right? Let's just I'm just going to start with this hammered coin. Um, it's pretty dirty. Um, I have cleaned it. It's got a lot of um, black on it, and so we'll see how this goes. Again, as I said, don't do this with anything that that you care about, just in case. Um, Silver descent tends to be all right with mild electrocution. Uh, copper does not. Copper coins fare really badly. You'll just smash them up if you're, if you're not careful. But um, I'm I'm willing to give to risk this little hammered coin. It's got it's it's a bit smashed up. It's it, you know it's broken there. It's got a dent in it there. So let's see what happens. I'm not crazy about electricity. I've got this set up on an Alexa device that controls this light, which is called hall light. So if I go Alexa, turn on hall light. That will go on and we're now in action and I can turn it on and off quite easily just with my voice. Alexa, turn off hall light. Right, here we go. So, make sure they don't touch. It, it won't, you'll destroy the, the whole thing. The, the thing won't work in the future. Um, I quite like just to hold this in because I'm not going to leave it in for very long anyway. So I'm going to put it in like that and say, Alexa, turn on hall light. And give that a second or two. And that has started bubbling a little bit gently. Sometimes if the connection's not perfect, it takes a bit longer. Um, you, need a vent you need quite a well-ventilated room for this sort of stuff if you're going to do it um, for any length of time. I think gases do get let off. I'm only using small coins. I'm not doing it for very long, so I'm not too worried. And that's not working at all. So, uh. <laughs> Alexa, turn on hall light. All right, that should work. Yeah, we can see a little... Now, if in doubt, just don't leave it for too long. Yeah, we're getting some action now. Yeah, that's bubbling now. It's gone very dark. Alexa, turn off hall light. And you can see from that, 
that quite a lot of that black, is it silver oxide, whatever it is, is coming off. Give it another quick zap. Yeah, it's fizzing away nicely now. To leave it for a second or two. Right, that's definitely had a bit of a fact. I don't want to do it too, too much. They're quite fragile, these coins. Look, all that silver, all that black's coming off and it's definitely, that could do with a few more grounds and then you'll get a nice shiny coin, maybe too shiny. So that's worked on that. Right, let's just go straight into Getter, come on. Right, here we go. Well, that's bubbling quite nicely already. Never done this with, with um, such a dark denarius before. Okay, Alexa, turn off hall line. Yeah, already I think there's stuff coming off there. How interesting. Okay. Yeah, quite a lot of black. Definitely make out a bit more ready. I'm going to be careful here. Give it another round. Not an awful lot coming off yet, but definitely, definitely a bit of sort of, is that, yeah, I think there's a bit more, definitely a bit more of the lettering we can see, can't we? Yeah, I think that, I think that's making a big difference already. Right, now that's given, I gave it a little bit more of a blast just now. Just don't want to over. Oh yeah, I think that's definitely having the desired effect. It's not coming off quite as fiercely as I thought it might. It's got very dark outside. If if the camera lights change, yeah, quite a lot of dirt coming off it now. Quite a lot of black is coming off on the white. So it's obviously having some sort of effect. It's not sort of, oh look, that really is coming off now, isn't it? Now, I don't want to overcook this. I don't know what happens in the worst case scenario, but anyway, it's, wor it's working. <laughs> look at that. Look at that, I mean, there's a lot coming off. Well, I was sort of expecting it. Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's, it's come up sort of silver coloured. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have expected that. Maybe it is just a very dark silver anyway. Some of these silver coins are very, are very sort of... Well, I'll give this a couple more goes and then we'll take it back to the other room. Well, that took quite a lot longer than I expected and I was being very, very careful. I've given it round after round after round. I don't think the electricity is very strong. Um, every time it came out, more and more black came off it. Um, you can see I've even washed my hands, they're still filthy. Um, and it gave quite a silvery, coppery look every time I bought it out. There's definitely a lot of copper in this, in, in the silver content of this. It was quite orange, it looked quite orange at times, quite pink. But as soon as it dries off, it goes back, it reverts back to being fairly dark again. I'm no great expert in the cleaning of these coins, I'm afraid, and I got slightly nervous that I may be sort of overdoing it. So I'll put it back on the detecting hub, see what they think. But I think I'm I'm happy with that. I'll let you be the judge of whether you think it's any better or not. It, to, I mean, I, I suspect under the camera you won't be able to really tell. I can clearly see Getter now on the left hand side of his head, which I couldn't really before, and the writing nearer the nearer his sort of the back of his neck. And I can clearly see. I think it is C's S C A E S on the right hand side. It's not, it wasn't a great coin to start off with. It's a lovely coin, but not in the best condition. I think that's improved it. I, I worry that if I kept on zapping it, it would just slowly sort of disintegrate. Hi there. Well, I've got some bad news, I'm afraid, because it, it, before I even got to doing the close-ups of the coin as I'd got it, and it was definitely an improvement. I could read the legend and all sorts of things. I, I curiosity got the better of me to see what would happen if I kept on going. I, I strengthened the electrolyte a little bit. I put salt in instead of um, sodium bicarbonate. And, and it really did start working and I think it worked almost too well. Um, a lot of black crud came off, a lot of oily, oily residue. Um, and I, even though I can still make out Getter quite nicely, I, I can no longer read the legend. That's just disintegrated now. Um, and therefore it looks to me to be the sort of coin that you've got to be really careful with. 
and even though it's black on the surface I don't think we're going to get through to the silver on that I just think that that over the years that's what it has become it's become that sort of black oxid oxidized in incrustation if we keep on going with that I think it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse so I'm gonna have to stop I'm gonna have to stop there I'm sorry I couldn't show you exactly how we got it it was definitely better than we started but now I'm afraid I really do think it's worse and while it's still a semi-decent coin I'm gonna leave it now and I'll do a proper video on electrolysis another time hopefully without smashing up too many coins oh and while I've got you <laughs> I've got to show you this now I keep updating you on this I found it a month or two ago um it was absolutely caked I'll, I'll remind you what it looked like before and I'll leave a link in the description but I'm painstakingly cleaning it look at this it's absolutely wonderful I've only got two more squares to do and I thought I might do those live but look at the detail and the gilding and believe it or not I've been using I've been using the composite pen with the brass really fine brass and I've been bossing it a bit and um, the uh, the other two um insets the um of of this didn't really work that well but the a really sharp brass um and it just seems to do it I mean look at that gosh I mean that's pride of place at the moment um and when I've got another 15 hours, I'll keep, on, I'll keep at it. Anyway, let's get back to the fields. I, we, we do come back here um, once more. Well, I don't think that's particularly old. I think it might be um, post-medieval, but that's definitely an acorn <laughs> in my book. Um, I think this must be a mount of sorts, isn't it? What an absolute beauty! It's in such lovely condition. Little acorn mount with its um little acorn um sort of what do you call it stalk? Well, I love that. God, absolutely beautiful. They don't, that's in lovely condition. Gosh very pleased hooray deep targets keep digging them no shallow target well that's a bit faint and squeaky and irony but it sounds just like the acorn I just dug up hmm I've only got one camera out with me today, I'm afraid, so you're not going to get too many angles. Well, I've got two cameras, but they're both small ones. And one's not very good in, in low light. No. It's going to be foil now, I think. But it's just deep enough. Really got to make up for the time I've lost today. Got to rush round rather a bit now. Yeah, it's a tiny bit of foil. Okay, not digging those anymore. Well, I very, very, very nearly didn't dig this. It was so foily sounding. Still very low. <laughs> it's a little hammered coin. My God, I'm, uh, uh, I'm feeling a bit better, but I'm still annoyed I've left myself so little time now. I found a really good area when conditions for digging in deep in pasture couldn't be better. Look at this little beauty. He's not very big. I'm not sure what he is. God, this. I mean, I'm guessing Edward of sorts, Civitas, London, I think. Um, but that's just lovely. Wow. So Roman and medieval silver, hopefully, hopefully. That's just made my day. That's really cheered me up. That's wonderful.
how much rain there was and today conditions are just perfect loads of rain nice moist but 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 dried off now and i think this is the second acorny thing i've found in this field i mean the first one was rather wonderful this one is even better it was properly deep it was all the way down there i mean that's a good i suppose eight nine inches gosh how amazing now where was the last one then well it was over all the way over there well not all the way but certainly 20 meters let's have a look let's bring him out ah 20p ah sorry i'll calm down in a minute well that's that bit and that's that bit well i think they're almost certainly related of sorts they look a bit different but <laughs> wow isn't that beautiful i'm thrilled with those Well, it's now looking like it might rain and showers are forecast. Um, <laughs> slightly irony, that. But uh, quite a nice deep squeak as well. I'm, n I'm not really live digging at the moment, but I just don't have time to set up. But, this, but if I think it's deep enough and it's got a good chance, this is 50-50. It's certainly deep. It's so whether it's any good. Well, it's sounding a bit sharper, but... <laughs> I'm pinpointing well today. <laughs> I always tell you when I'm pinpointing well and when I'm pinpointing badly. God, the last time I was pinpointing terribly. It's deep. Well, having said I'm pinpointing well, it's just in the side there. No way. Not going to be any good after all this, that's for sure. But it's in here. Oh. Right, no more live digs, I'm afraid. I can't be, I don't have time. It's a little, it's a little um, army buckle, army button of sorts. Well, it's not more acorns, is it? Can't be. Gave a lovely sound. It was very deep. Just a whisper, whisper, wisp. But I think that's just a bronze blob. And you know what I feel about bronze blobs. I don't think it is an acorn. I don't think there's anything on it. Even though it's quite sort of gnarly. We'll clean it up and see. I mean, it looks like it's got something, but I don't think it does. But as I said, you know what I feel about bronze blobs. Nothing but good can come of them. They're brilliant. Really good sign. If you find these, you'll find Roman or Celtic. Definitely. It's a given. Well, this is one of the best signals I've had all day. But absolutely ideal for this field. Trying to see if there's a ring pull I can compare it to. No. That's deep. And either, well, probably copper. It might be a cartridge, it might be a rifle round, but I just love that sound from this field. You know you've got such a good chance. It's not on the surface. It's just on the tip there, so whatever it is, five, six inches. I'm pinpointing well today. Just there, bang in the middle. God, all the way down there. I've dug so many of these today. That fooled me. It's a penny. Well, it didn't fool me because, you know, it's a... <laughs> I just thought that would be really good. 
never mind. That really was the ideal signal. More of those, please. Well, sadly, I've got to end on this. There's definitely a lesson to be learned here. And sorry to be so ranty, but I'm really cross. Trust your gut feeling until there's nothing else. And then dig up all the stuff that you know is rubbish on the off chance that one of those things might be good. Because it's just been such a good day today and I've only left myself two hours to do it. That's really nice. But there's quite a lot of army stuff here. But that could be good. I'm just a spoilt bugger, that's all. <laughs> that's all. It, I say it a lot. Metal detecting is time management. It really is. If you want to waste your time on absolutely everything, then do. But if you want to give yourself the maximum chance of finding good stuff in a given period of time, then you've, you've got to be disciplined. Well, that's not as deep as I thought, I must say. I don't like it at all now. I thought that was going to be a ring pull. Even the stuff that doesn't sound like ring pulls, it's ring pulls. <laughs> well, I don't know what that is. It's a bit of, it's a bit of bling. Uh, it's a sort of, I don't know, they have festivals on this ground. And talking of bling, I have found a ring. But again, a bit like that thing we've just found. It's just, it's just a bit of crap, really, I think. Well, I know it. <laughs> it's in the shape of a crown. Maybe it's a crown for a Barbie or something. Anyway, well, that little bits of stuff to cheer you up, anyway. Guys and girls, thank you very much for watching. And see you next time when I'll be in a better mood. Even though we found some wonderful things, I'm so bloody lucky. I'm just a spoiled bugger, that's all. See you next time. <laughs>